This chapter includes mild nudity and themes of a society where women hold the positions of power and authority and men are raised for hard labor or the military. Just past dawn, in a Kurubuti military barracks in the Anum kingdom of Akadia, Sarva adjusted her armor, her mind focused on the day's coming events. Enter. Your mails are ready, Papa. Good. Rubati, Sarva's personal attaché, entered deep in the throes of her daily routines. She quickly helped Sarva strap sword to belt. It is a momentous day, Papa. Most certainly is, Rubati. Erishti always said hard work and perseverance pays off. I wish Erishti could be here. Me too. And just as quickly, Rubati left to attend other vital duties. Sava took a solitary moment to hand-feed an old friend, a garden-dweller that lived just outside her window. Good morning, little one. Yes, today's the day. Exactly. For family and honor. A little while later, she exited the barracks to inspect her personal Sakatu. Elite soldiers in Akadia's Kurubuti guard. Balatu, the most senior of her Sakatu, stood at attention, stiffening like timber while the rest followed suit. Vigilant! A beautiful morning, Nubanda. The sun's beauty is eclipsed only by your own. Aha! Uh-huh. And how are my males? My coxman? My lecherous Sercatu today? Eager to serve and bear witness to your ascension, Papa. Is this the truth? Excellent! We travel with our Patesi Iltani from the Ziggurat of Ishtar to the Puru. Are we prepared? Yes, Papa! Mount your steeds! I have trust in you, Palasu. Today, of all days, I want perfection. God's willing, Papa. The city of Eriku. The kingdom of Akadia. Later that morning, Sava proudly led her Sakatu through wide, sun-baked streets. The cool morning fog lifted as they crossed the Adiklat River and passed beyond the lapis lazuli walls that marked Eriku's inner sanctum. Nestled behind these secure walls were the homes and palaces of Akadia's elite noble class. And beyond that, the gates of Ishtar, which led to a towering ziggurat. Sava's destination, the home to a goddess, Patesi Iltani. Sava and her retinue passed through the glistening sapphire gate of Ishtar and promptly proceeded to the foot of a ziggurat monument, the Palace of Arcadia. Along with other VIPs, she was made to wait at the Patesi's land barge. A fully furnished mobile terrace replete with all the perks a demigoddess might expect, such as exotic flora, animals, foods, and slaves ready to provide any and all comfort required. Enduring Arcadia's legendary heat, rows of Lamassu-led slaves stood shackled to the barge, awaiting the whipmaster's strike. All remained silent. Until finally, Patesi Iltani appeared. And for a moment, sun pulsed. 
the Anumian's heat intensified. The Patesi cast a blistering stare upon all those present as she elegantly swept down the stairs. Vigilance! All bowed deeply, eyes averted, daring not to gaze upon her divine presence. The highest ranking officer in the Akkadian military, Ugalamatu Humusi, flanked by Royal Sakatu, took guard position. Patesi Iltani turned towards Sarva. Sarva, welcome. We are so honored to be here, Patesi. As you should, Sarva, rising star of Akkadia, and so pretty. Patesi is a kind and generous ruler. You should be very grateful to be in her presence. I am so very grateful. I will remember this day for the rest of my life. The Patesi mounted the barge. Sarva stood up to follow, but was immediately cut off by Humusi. You ride with your surkat. Let her pass. This is highly irregular. Papa Sarva is a guest of honor, Humusi. I want her to see how the great I have lives. Sarva accepted the Patesi's hand, taking a position with her goddess. On board the royal barge, the world passed unnoticed while Iltani enjoyed a refreshing drink and various exotic fruits. All the while, fanboys waved palm fronds to cool her. The Patesi's barge slowly progressed along the processional way amidst the chatter of its occupants and the occasional sounds of whip strikes upon slaves. All of Arcadia came out to get a glimpse of the goddess. Half-hearted waves and anemic cheers sent a message. Not all were happy. Sit, Sarva. What does Arishti think of your achievements? Mother is stingy with praise, generous with critiques. All to strengthen my character, I assume. She just does not want to fatten your ego. That is my job. To coax you into becoming a leader, or perhaps even Ugalamartu, commander of my army. But what about Humusi? Humusi has served me well, but there is always room for improvement. It is very generous, but I... Maybe too generous. You're right. What was I thinking? Feels rather underwhelming. No? They adore you, Patasi. They are just stunned by your beauty, your wisdom, your power. Patronizing to the last Humusi. Sarva? I see no love in their eyes. Direct, honest. Rare qualities around here. Sarva is right. They have no love for me. But who needs love when I command their respect? <laughs> respect? Or fear, my Patesi? Fear garners respect. They work hand in hand, as I foresee you and I will, Sarva. Iltani studied the vacant stairs around her and those of her subjects on the streets beyond. Our infrastructure is crumbling. Is there a problem that requires my attention? No, your greatness. I heard something about infrastructure crumbling. If that is not a cry for my attention, I do not know what is. Very well. Aqueducts and sewers are in dire need of repair. The situation has only gotten worse. If we do not fix them, it is a near certainty that disease and illness will run rampant by summer's end. Our hands are tied. The budget is locked. Then raise taxes. End of problem. Your Holiness, we raised taxes three times this past year alone. Still, we drown in red. At this point, extracting blood from a stone seems more likely. Enough of these games. They will pay or they will forfeit their lives. Shall be done, Your Holiness. Good. Now leave me. Today is not a day for political squabbling. Today is a day 
for celebration. The processional way linked the Patesi Ziggurat Palace like a spear thrust through the heart of Veracruz's inner city to the Puru. The Akkadian Government Assembly Building. The massive public works project had just recently been completed costing the lives of some 12,000 slaves. A modest cost for such a glorious result, all in the name of the goddess Iltani. An explosion of protests and insults shook the heavens, enveloping the land barge as it approached the entrance of the pool. Iltani met anger with anger. The bellicose roar of her lion reverberated, silencing the crowd. Sakatu pushed back the masses. The entrance swung wide open. Yiltana's barge rolled in and was greeted by an eruption of applause and triumphant fanfare from the General Assembly. The Puru's cavernous innards displayed wealth and vanity on a grand scale. All to the glory of Iltani. A colossal marble statue stood guard. It represented the duality of the Patesi's sphere of power, battle and fertility. The museum-like complex contained a menagerie of sculptures in action poses. Some depicted Iltani reenacting historical battles. Others portrayed her in Kama Sutra poses. Sakatu closed ranks as the slaves slowly brought the barge to rest before the council members. The assembly grew quiet as Sava knelt before Iltani. The Patesi unsheathed a golden blade and held it out for all to admire. Council women of Akaria! We have gathered to honor one of our own. She has demonstrated a warrior's strength, fortitude, and cunning in all aspects of life, be it on the battlefield, home front, or my good graces. I speak to you, of course, of Sarva, daughter of Arishti. Sarva, who will soon play a most important role in my inner circle, to defend and serve me, now and forevermore. So, it is with tremendous pride, I give to thee, Sharun! Iltani presented Sava with Sharun, a legendary Akkadian weapon. Sharur, smasher of thousands, no stranger to demon, to serpent, to dragon. A blade that has served me well, as I am sure it will serve you. Sarva, daughter of Arishti, do you, for gods and glory, accept this most precious gift? I do accept, your holiness. For Iltani! Yes! 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 For me! The room suddenly fell silent. Time to die, you petty Sava swiftly drove Sharur through Iltani. The raucous jubilation devolved into shrieks, gasps, and howls of horror. Iltani collapsed and slowly slipped off the end of the blood-soaked blade. No! You dare strike on Patasi! I am Shala. Daughter of Ahatsuna, the rightful Patesi of Akkadia. Shala, a daughter of Ahatsunu? Lies! The family of Ahatsuna is long dead, killed by Eltani herself. Well, she missed one. Erishti hid me in plain sight as Sarva and raised me as her own. Eltani's inglorious reign ends now. Long live Shalla!
enthroned by assassination, terminated by assassination, for family, for honor, for Acadia! Remarkably, Etane clung to life. She twitched and gasped. Hear her! Musi pushed past Salva's men, yanked her sword, and attempted to block the coup de grace, but Sharur shattered her blade. Greatly outnumbered, Hamusi was driven off the barge by Sava's Sirkatu. <clears throat> Meanwhile, Sava repeatedly struck Iltani with every ounce of her fiber, vile hatred and revenge driving each swing of the blade. She's losing strength. She's losing strength. Sakatu soon joined in, and little by little, they exhausted Iltane's primal shield. Finally, Sava drove Sharur straight through Etane's heart, wrenching it sideways. <laughs> Akadia! We... We shall rebuild Acadia, bring it back to its rightful place in Caldia. But to kill a god, even a demigoddess, was a near impossible feat. And for Sava, it was becoming a brutally hard lesson. <laughs> oh, yes. Sharu can slay many things. Demon, serpent, even dragon. But kill a god. <laughs> oh, Sarva. Poor, poor Sarva. Iltani let loose primal fury. Blasting souls from mortal flesh. A primal detonation sent bodies careening off the barge. Sava landed with a thud, the wind taken from her sails. The Patesi of Arcadia, demigoddess, revered daughter of Ishtar, and concubine of Emperor Kadava, rose forth. Energy and health restored. When you are gone, Sava, I shall that no one remembers you ever existed. But in her blind fury, she overlooked two important details. The rolling barge... ...and the wheel. The unwieldy barge, propelled by so many slaves, could not be stopped, even by Iltana's divine strength. The wheel crushed her. But that wasn't enough. Beneath the stone wheel, Iltane's physicality grew, her size augmented by a transcendent purpose. Iltane heaved. The wheel slowly rose, and with it, the barge. Run! Officials, dignitaries, and soldiers alike fled in blind panic. So did Sava and her Sirkatu. In their wake, they left the Puru in flames. As an emergency precaution, wise Balatu had brought with him an incendiary device. Alchemist fire, hot enough to melt even stone. And with it, hopefully, a certain demigoddess. Hope was all that they had. Nothing seemed capable of killing Iltani, nothing. How could Sava have been so wrong? She bet her life and those of her Sakatu that Shurur would destroy the Patesi. But her plot to kill Iltane had failed. Quite clearly now, Sava, Rubati, and her males were lucky to be alive. And so together, they fled Arcadia across the Great Sea. May the gods guide our souls.
The city of Ogstad. The kingdom of Hesse. Erishti. The venerable ambassador of Arcadia. Each evening she left the embassy within the government Kreis of Ogstad, preferring to walk alone to burn off the stress of the day. On her way home, she would often detour through the international fair to see what the world merchants had to offer. Heinrich, what have you for me today? Oh, ambassador! Oh, you try the pompenera! Oh, it's fresh from the oven this morning! Heinrich, that is the problem. I have had your pumpernickel. Huh? You don't like? But everyone... Not like. Love. Oh! <laughs> oh! You twist the words around like dough. Oh, very clever. <laughs> Arishti enjoyed verbal sparring and wordplay nearly as much as she enjoyed fresh-baked bread. A little while later, Pumpernickel firmly tucked under her arm, Aristi chanced a shortcut home. The sun bid a fond farewell to the day's events, allowing long shadows to creep across Ogstot's many streets and thoroughfares. Aristi fumbled momentarily with her bread. Oh, ah! Oh, gods be damned! Spooked by darting obscurities ahead, a dull clamor echoed and faded just as quickly and then hushed voices. I am an ambassador of Arcadia. You lay a hand on me and Iltani herself will strike you down. Can you slice a piece for me, mother? I'm famished. Fear turned to joy. <gasps> oh, Sarva, praise the gods. I feared the worst, child. Still breathing. Rupati, last I saw you were barely up to my waist. Now look at you, on track for your own command. If not for this career hiccup... That's quite the understatement. News travels fast, I see. A mixture of truths and propaganda. But I think I know the real story. It was the perfect moment. I won Iltani's trust, her confidence. Avenging your family, seeking justice, I understand. But maybe this was rash. She bestowed Sharur to me. I saw the chance and I took it, sunk the blade deep through the bitch's heart. But it, it didn't work. Oh, Sarva. That's what Iltani said after she awoke from the dead. It is a powerful sword, really, very dangerous. But it is not the sword. I know that now. Iltani must have offered it to test my loyalty. I am proud to say that I failed. Your defeat will serve as a stark warning to others with an itch to overthrow her. No one dares attempt it now. There must be a way to destroy her. I have heard rumors of a special blade... But that is all. What were you thinking coming here? I'm here to get you out of Augustat before Eltani... What? Kills me? If I thought that were to be the case, I would have left town days ago. Truth of the matter is, Iltani needs me alive to lure you here. I have no choice but to stay. But you... You have a choice. And I choose to take you with us. We may not share the same blood... But you are my mother, my family. Sava locked arms with her mother. Rubati followed closely, anxious to depart the gloom of the alleyway for brighter streets. 
in the ever-increasing darkness ahead. Were they men or foul creatures of the night? Demons, vampires, or ghosts? The lady stopped abruptly. Surrounded and outflanked, Sava drew her blade. You step one foot closer. You will want to protect what is important to you. Then, a deep, familiar voice broke the tension. I only got one thing that's important to me, Papa. That little thing. <laughs> Hardly worth saving. This is all the Sercatu who remain? The others were killed or captured. Your loyalty is to be commended, Nubanda. You are our Papa. Our loyalty is without measure until death. Armed Arcadians marching through Augstadt's streets would not go unnoticed. Erishti hurriedly led them to her nearby home. Erishti, Sava, and company rushed past the upscale homes of wealthy merchants and minor nobles. At the end of a large cul-de-sac, a lavish estate loomed, surrounded by wide provincial lawns and lush gardens. Erishti's ambassadorial home. Erishti directed everyone to the rear of her estate to avoid prying eyes. The athletic Akkadians quickly leapt the fence, landing amongst a bevy full of barnyard creatures. <laughs> These are not exactly luxury accommodations. This will be more than satisfactory. I can set you up in the house. Thank you, but we should stay as a group, just in case. Very well. Then get some rest. Erishti loved her horses and longed for the day when she could finally leave politics and retire to the tranquil life of a country girl. Aroma of farm animals aside, Sava was relieved to finally have a place to rest all their weary heads. The next morning, Sava washed the dust of the road and the stench of the barn from her face as Arishti arrived with nourishment. Morning. I brought food for your men. You and Rubati will eat with me. Inside Arishti's kitchen, her cook presented a feast fit for a noble. After a time, with their appetite sated, the conversation naturally shifted to the elephant in the room. Where will you go next? You mean, where will we go next? Did we not cover this already? I am staying put. Why? My days of adventure are long past. And what use would I be? A woman of my vintage would only slow you down. Nonsense! We'll find you the fastest horse. I will make sure of it, and you still move quite well for someone of your... Well, you said it, not me. And if I was injured, what then? My Sirkatu will carry you over the hills, through the mountain passes, across the desert. It makes no difference. And I ask again, what is your plan? A quick sword and mind will only get you so far. Always thought I would look good in an imperial uniform. With those helms, with the pretty plumes. You do look good in red, Papa. The Legion? It is strictly men only. The Legion should be so lucky to fight as well as I. No question. You have the gift. But if you have not noticed, you are not in Arcadia anymore. You are wanted criminals on the run. And with Iltani engaged to Emperor Cordava, your pretty face probably adorns every tavern wall from here to Saratov. The longer you stay, the greater the danger. Then come with us. Please, I beg of you. I will not leave. You must go, now. I'm sorry. I should not have raised my voice. Don't you understand? I implicated you in front of Eltani. Nothing will stop her from killing you. Rubati, gather my Sirkatu. We leave at once. Yes, Papa. Sarva, please. I just want to know. 
Do you regret taking me in, being my mother? Oh, Sarva, my sweet, defiant child, not for one moment. You are the joy of my life. Damn, you're good. It is settled. I am going with you. Plan or no plan. Damn the consequences. Excellent. What should I take? None of your fancy outfits will be going through God knows what. I know it is not a vacation. I am talking about weapons. Weapons? You? <laughs> Ill-defined shadows quickly swept past the windows. No. Trouble was brewing. Shattered glass sprayed. Murderous cutthroats burst through window and door. Ardean steel, marking them Arcadian assassins. Umusi strode confidently inside. Harboring murderous enemies of the Patasi, lying about Sarva's true heritage. Ambassador, Iltani is not my Patasi. With a flick, Arishti released her dagger just as Humusi squeezed the trigger of her crossbow. The bolt and dagger whistled. Arishti and Humusi took simultaneous hits. No! <laughs> Intend to ladle me to death. Weapons plunged. Blood sprayed. Patesi grants eternal life to the one who kills Sarva. Go! Quickly! The fight quickly devolved into an unfettered brawl. Fists, knees, and improv weaponry. Sarva disarmed an assassin, sliced his throat, then struck another in the forehead. Caught by surprise, Sarva, Rubati, and Arishti were still more than the assassins could handle. There would be no eternal life for these men. Assassins lay dead and dying. Humusi and Rubati faced off. Butter churn versus mace. Outside came the quick clatter of hooves and many men with weapons. Victory thwarted, Humusi headed for the exit. Sava flung steel. The dagger whipped past Rubati's ear, hitting Humusi in the shoulder. Sarva? Sorry. Serpent's tooth works its evil quickly. Poison. Sava and Rubati exchanged frightened glances. All three women were injured. Sava gathered Arishti close. Hold, while I get this out of you. No, I am finished. Sava ignored her and pulled the bolt out as Arishti coughed up green bile. Sava just cradled her like a child. Balatu came running, panicked and wide-eyed. Papa! Oh my gods! I've let you down! Apologize later. We've been poisoned. Check the assassins for the antidote! Palatu quickly recovered an antidote vial from an assassin and passed it to Sarva. Here, take this. You, you are the rightful Patesi of Arcadia. Ah, <laughs> uh, someday you will kill her. No. Lots. No. No! Arishti's head rolled, and just like that, she was gone. Papa, you must take the antidote too. The hex stormed the home. Shava of Akadia. Sometime later, Sava, Rubati, and her Sirkatu were dragged in rough irons to... Gunterbrink, the infamous Hessen military prison. Deep into its bowels they plunged, until finally all were shoved into a cramped windowless cell to begin the arduous process of withering death. Low moans haunted the dungeon. Protests and shrieks not entirely human echoed. The Akkadians were not alone. Then, from out of the shadows, 
another resident emerged from inside their very cell. One enormous rodent. Watch out, f***ing die rat! For a brief moment, the men played kick the bugger with the primeval vermin. <laughs> Do not kick it over here. Oh, oh. Quiet, all of you. They cannot keep all of us in this cell together, can they? It's inhumane. Inhumane? We're in a fucking prison, you ignorant turd. As their stay dragged on, sadness turned into despair. And finally, a creeping dread. Sava forced back tears, refusing to show weakness in front of the males. But she couldn't deny the facts. Erishti was dead, and it was her fault. And now, everyone she knew lay rotting in a prison. Rubati offered Sava a canteen. They let me keep it. Sorry, it's just water. I'm not thirsty. Erishti was a great woman. A great Akkadian. Raised me, protected me and taught me everything I know. Including animal speak? Yes. She also trained me to control and channel my emotions. <laughs> we can see how well that turned out. Papa, what do you think they intend to do with us? I do not know. Kill us? I do not know. The soft scuttle of boots, the rattle of keys, followed by a voice and the sharp scrape of metal. The cell door swung wide open. You, come with me. Where are you taking her? None of your fucking business. Sava was dragged at harsh sword point to the outside world and blinding light beyond. In the courtyard, a dwarven military officer waited patiently in an open-air carriage. Get in. I am Grand Master Kane Currig, commander of the Hex. I am sorry. I know who you are. Your stunt turned Iltani into a raging nightmare. Her unholiness once you extradited back to Acadia immediately. Well, that is not happening. Sit down, you fool. It's not settled yet. First, Governor Gustafus wishes to speak to you. The Grand Master's carriage slowly exited Gunterbrink, followed by knights and twenty horsemen. The rigid military column snaked its way out of Ogstart through the north gates and onto the Imperial Coastal Highway that linked the continent's largest port cities. Later, as they neared the Garnon River that marked the border between Hesse and the Garnon Forest, a massive dwarven bastion hewn from Old World stone rose majestically on the horizon. Enchantment's gone. Enchantment's Guard, last of the great fortresses, dating back to before the Clawhammer War. The dragons, the elders, they did not destroy it. Remarkable. Not from lack of trying. A Drazzledar, an icon of Emperor Cordava's power, stood guard at the main gates atop the steeple causeway. As the carriage approached, the giant swamp demon bent down to inspect its occupants, first sniffing Kurig, then Sava. Unconcerned, it returned to its post. You passed the first test. First? And if I had not? You'd be dead. Likely me alongside you. What is the second test? Governor Gustafus will be with you shortly. A little while later, Sava waited patiently inside the governor's posh office 
perusing his impressive collection of tomes and manuscripts. A title caught her eye. She pulled out the book, reading, Envigi, a method for the study of war through the use of toy soldiers, by Reiswitz George von Gustavus. A grizzled Hessen imperial officer entered. Helwig Johann von Gustavus, the governor of the continent of Nisha. Papa Sarva, governor, as you ordered. Governor, I am honored. Every reading, trust me. I much prefer 3.5. The simplification of skirmish formations was long overdue, and the introduction of orb defenses allows a woman, well... I should say, a commander, to have hope in desperate straits. You play, then? Of course, sir. All Qurbuti guard, too. Reichwitz Gustavus, your father? My son, a little older than you, a serious and biggest. Sit, please. Queen Iltani sent a diplomatic dispatch demanding I return you to Acadia. Explain to me why I shouldn't acquiesce to her wishes. You should not. I officially request asylum. Little late for that. Had you approached me before getting involved in all this murder and mayhem in my streets, then possibly... I was acting in self-defense. Her victims were identified as Akkadian assassins. Ah, tit for tat, eh? You did try to assassinate your Kunigan. Or, as you call her, Patessi. She is not the true Patessi of Acadia. She executed my family to take the crown. I don't want to sound unsympathetic to your situation. I am. What happened to your family was a tragedy. Nevertheless, Emperor Cordava and the world still recognize Iltane as the Patessi of Acadia. I will die before bending a knee to that scabrous whore. If you return me to Acadia... She'll kill you. But what would you have me do? I understand women are not permitted in the Imperial Legions. But what about the Hex? You in the Hex? I am a papa in the Qurbuti Guard. You've never heard of the Qurbuti Guard? I have, but why should I be impressed by guards commanded by women? A little respect, Kurik. The expertise of the Kubruti Guard is second only to Emperor Kodava's legions. By tomorrow, Iltani's betrothed, Emperor Kodava, will back her demands to extradite you. Simply enlisting you will not fix this mess. Then I am doomed. Helvig studied the brash Akkadian. One could almost hear the gears of calculation spinning wildly between his attentive ears. Tell me, Papa. You command a cohort of 500 men. The opposing force has ambitions to turn your left flank. What do you do? Depending upon the nature of the ground, I would attempt to stabilize the left wing and strengthen it with cavalry and reserves. And your right wing? It should have unimpeded movement. Another test passed. Excellent. Seems my son will get a new opponent at last, and a challenging one at that. I do not follow. I have no choice but to offer you asylum before I receive the order to extradite. Yes? Iltani turned this into an international incident when she sent assassins into this kingdom. I am assigning you to my son, Legatus Reiswitz, as a civilian analyst. Thank you, Governor. This is only a stopgap to buy us time before I am forced to hand you over to Iltani. A few months, a year, who knows? I understand. But what of my males? Rest assured, they are still your males. They will have a place here in Enchantment's Guard. Well, dismissed. Stunned, Sava staggered to the door, then hesitated. Erishti always tried to teach her prudence. But to her setu with prudence, she turned back to the governor. Why are you helping me? You are royalty. And any chance to spit in the eye of Antani, I'll sure as hell take it. Governor Gustavus had tossed Sava a lifeline to save her from a storm of her own making. She was saved. Il 
Otani's wrath would be unrelenting and swift. But for the moment, at least, Sava, Rubati, and her Sirkatu were safe. Soldiers. You're here at last. Better not be a goddamn surprise, partner. 